Hi, oh, g'day. Welcome to Farming Live Australia. This video is a help video with tips and tricks for new MIG welders. And I mean people new to MIG welding, I don't mean a new MIG welding machine. Because this is quite an involved subject and it's a help video to help people to get MIG welding, I'm going to do it in more than one video. And after any one of these videos, if you have questions, Put them in the comments section, I'll answer them and I'll also try and show you in an upcoming video how to go about whatever you want to know about, if I can. I suppose the first thing to consider is that potentially any welder can be dangerous and we have to think about personal safety. If you treat the machine incorrectly, there's danger from electrocution. And the other thing is, of course, you're dealing with molten metal, so the potential to get burnt is there as well. The first thing is to consider long sleeve shirts at a minimum, gloves to protect your hands, and of course, a face shield so you can see and also to protect your eyes. Companies that supply welding gear have lots of different things to protect your body when you're welding. It's well worthwhile investing in safety gear. It's a lot cheaper than hospital bills. And the very first thing to consider when you're trying to weld is good lighting. Even though you're looking through a screen, good lighting will help you a lot. Comfort, you need to be comfortable. If you're trying to weld upside down and inside out and you're uncomfortable and cramped, it will be very difficult to do a good job. And another thing is make sure you can see properly. As I've got older, my eyes have deteriorated a bit and, well, really it's more that my arms aren't long enough. I use these cheap glasses, they're just magnifying glasses to read, and I use a little bit stronger one when I'm welding. And I just put them on and put my mask over the top of my glasses like so. Without those glasses when I'm welding, I find it very difficult to see properly. And obviously if you can't see properly, you can't do a good job. The other thing with your mask is that they get dirty and dust. You don't realise because it happens slowly, but you, the clarity of your sight just goes downhill as your lenses get dirtier. So it's a good idea at the minimum to clean them and every so often they need to be replaced. If you look at this one here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's all dirty. I've been doing a lot of welding with it and it's got marks on it from welding. And I, you, I don't know if you can pick it up, but the inside one has become dusty. The clear lens in here and on here on the outside is replaceable. And you do need to replace them now and again. Put your mask down and, and sometimes things on the bench scratch the clear screen on the outside. But at the very least, try and keep them clean and clean them with something that's, that's not going to scratch your lenses. Another thing I'd suggest is to get yourself an auto darkening helmet. I realise that the ones with a fixed lens that doesn't auto-darken are a lot cheaper. However, the auto-darkening helmet will make life a lot easier for you. Everyone's welder that they own will be different to mine, or some people's will be. Today I'll be using this Unimig Viper MIG TIG Stick 185 combination. I've gone over to all Unimig products now. I find that in today's market, they've been the most reliable for me. Because people are going to have different welders, I can't give the settings for every single welder out there. In the case of the Unimig, it has some recommendations inside the actual door of the machine, and generally they're a place to start, but they're certainly not the be all and end all when it comes to settings. They're somewhere to start, as I said, but you need to fine tune it from there. The gas I'm using today is Denago Shield Universe, which is a pretty standard gas for mild steel. Actually, I use it on stainless steel as well, it's fine. I set my gauges so that when the gas is flowing, the regulator is sitting on about 13. I realise that some of you won't be using gas, you'll be using inner shield wire. That's okay, it doesn't really change things that much. For the purposes of this video, I'll be using normal wire with gas. I find in the workshop environment that's much better for me. I realise a lot of you out there don't want to have to have gas. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just prefer wire with gas. The wire I'm using today is a Unimig product GP wire, 0.9 is the size. The first joint we're going to do is join a piece of flat bar together so it'll be a butt joint. This is the material we're using. It's 50 by 8 mil thick. A lot of the times on YouTube I see people, or I see people generally, they put the bar together like that and weld it. And the way I was taught that's totally incorrect. What you need to do is V the two ends of your flat bar
then they'll fit together like this and that'll achieve two things. It'll give you somewhere to put the well down into so that when you grind it off all the weld isn't ground off except the surface. It'll make it a lot easier for the well to penetrate and the strength will be as good as it can be. You will wind up with 100% penetration if you do it correctly. So that's how the joint is going to fit together looking from the side and these parts here represent the weld so you can see that it can penetrate right through the whole piece of material. In this case I can put it on this piece of I-beam and clamp it down to tack it and then turn it over and weld the other side. This is the settings that I've currently got the welder on. The wire feed speed is on 6.1, 6, 6.1, 6.2 it wouldn't really matter. The volts are on 21.8, 21, 22 wouldn't really matter that would work on this material. I've now got the work clamped down and in a lot of situations you won't be able to do this you'll have to make do some other way but I'll show you this first if I put a couple of heavy tacks on this side be before I turn it over and weld what's going to happen is it's going to tend to want to pull it like this end up and this end up and not be straight so what I'll do first is put a couple of very light tacks here and over here and then I'll turn it over and tack the other side a bit heavier then weld it If your tacks are sticking up above your surface at all, you probably need to clean them off because they'll get in the road when you try and clamp it. So that's what that looks like. And we're now going to give this side a decent tack and then go back to this side and fully weld it. If you're not too worried about distortion, if it's not critical, you probably could have welded that straight up on that side. I'm showing you the way to avoid distortion and to get a good strong weld. If, if these three lines represent the V'd out joint, we are not going to just weld straight down the joint like that. We're going to start here and go cross, down, across, down, cross, down, cross, down, cross, down, cross, down. What we have to make sure of, of course, is when we move down and come across here, that we don't come down too far and leave a gap. When we're welding, the weld will actually be like, like that, and then like that, and then like that, and then like that, and then like that. Make sure your shield gas is going to stay and shield your weld at all times. Now that's our first side welded up. It looks acceptable, it hasn't got undercut or anything like that, it's fine. And here we are on this side. So she's completely welded up. It's nice and straight, it's not all bent from distortion. I've now cleaned it all up with the angle grinder and you can see looks quite good again not bent straight for something like duty that doesn't need to be extremely strong or as strong as you can get it you can get away with just a bit of a v and leave a little gap so that your weld will penetrate down in and that's fine when you get a bit more experience and you know what you're doing at the start when you need a really strong weld and you want to make sure it's good especially in thicker material like from four mil and up Make sure you V out your welding joint before you start. I know that probably seemed like a lot of muck and round to do a weld. And I don't do that all the time. But if I was going to build something like, say, a box trailer or something where the strengths had to be absolutely at its maximum, that's the sort of length I'd go to. We'll get onto these two welds here and here now. This is 3 mil, this box. The bit of flat bar on the end is 2.5 mil. And because it's a fillet weld in the corner, it won't require anything other than I'll clean the gal off a bit. And this is not hot dip gal, so it's not as bad as hot dip gal, it's just electroplated. And here, I'll just weld it straight up, I won't need to clean anything off there. You'll have to bear with me a bit, I'm trying to get my camera settings right for filming this welding. But if you watch closely in these next couple of scenes, you can see that I'm weaving the handpiece backwards and forwards to make a nice fillet weld. I've turned the welder back a bit here. It'll be very easy on this corner to make a mess if the amps are too high. I've given both of these welds a good clean up. 
with the wire brush so that you can see what they look like. The last welding job I'm going to do is to weld these two stub axles on and I have to do a couple of things to prepare them and I'll show you what that is. The first thing is, is to clean them up really clean. I've cleaned them both down and now there's just one more step before I weld them on. Because these surfaces here, bearings and the nut and all that's going to run on it, I want to make sure I don't get any welding splatter on it. So what I'm going to do is put some masking tape over the whole thing and make sure it's completely protected. Here they are now, ready to be welded on. This stub axle is going to get welded on here like this. And this isn't a heavy duty thing and it's not for towing along the highway. And although we want it fairly accurate, it's not as critical as something that is going to get towed along the highway at high speed. We've got the axle set up as accurately as I can. And on the back here I've got a centre line and a mark in the centre of the axle. And I'm going to tack it on the back here first. And then I'm going to tack the other one. And then I'm going to put a piece of string line across them and make sure they're all correct before I actually weld them up. I've now got a centre line on both of them. Now what I'm going to do is put the straight edge along and if they need any adjusting, if they're not on the line, I'll adjust them by tapping them with the hammer over that way a bit. Perfect. One thing to check is that they're not bent up this way or this way at all. We'll do that by as well putting a straight edge along this way. This end on both sides needs pulling down before I weld it. It's only really fractional, but I'll put this clamp on and pull it down and tack it and it'll be fine. Okay, I've got a good strong tack on here now and I have tacked the other side as well. And now I'm actually welding up and I'm doing a process called backstepping which I'll explain in the next movie. And if you watch the torch you will see that it actually weaves backwards and forwards in that pattern that I showed you earlier. Here I've cleaned off the weld so you can see what's going on when it's finished. And it's not as smooth as it would be if I didn't backstep it. Just the process of backstepping. Because you're stopping and starting every couple of inches or so, it's never quite as smooth as a continuous run. But it does stop distortion, and it also makes it very strong. That about wraps up this edition of Farming Live Australia. As I mentioned earlier, if you've got anything you'd like to see in the upcoming video on MIG welding, just put it in the comment section and I'll do my best to try and show you and explain it to you. Thanks a lot for watching this edition of Farming Alive Australia. We'll see you next time.